it's interesting like when you have a gift you don't really realize that it is a gift you know like it's wow. telling stories and being as authentic as i possibly can like it's what rob boy's been doing since he was yeah. a little kid but people really need help mm -hmm. on that you know mm -hmm. and so what i decided to do was take all of the lessons that i learned as a broadway performer and a director choreographer and an entrepreneur building this seven figure company and figure out what is the framework around identifying your signature story and not just identifying it but rehearsing it and then sharing it one thing i've learned about resetting especially in your career is that you must embrace what got you here in the first place you must embrace your story and know how to tell it Hey everyone, I'm Letitia Bariola, the host of The Reset. I'm also a career coach and I'm here to help you make a pivot, make some changes and start again. You know, as a former journalist, a news anchor, I, I understand the power of storytelling and how it can be used to shift mindsets and even open doors of opportunity for you. So I brought in some help on this topic and it was such a delight. I almost think I made a friend. Like, I don't know. The verdict is still out, but like it was such a good interview. I'm talking about Robert Hartwell, public speaker and CEO of Strength on Stages, where he coaches people on the art of authentic storytelling and selling from the stage. Robert is a well-known Broadway performer and created the multi-million dollar arts educational company, the Broadway Collective. Y'all, he is helping people. He's helping us use storytelling as a tool to step into our higher calling, to step into our purpose. Um, it is such a beautiful way to elevate your life, knowing your story and knowing how to tell it. So here's my convo with the great Robert Hartwell. Robert, welcome to The Reset! I am so grateful to be here. This is going to be such a special conversation. Oh, it is. It is. And I just want to just tap into this. So I'm a journalist at heart. People know my story. I've been telling stories forever. But there's something about the way you talk about telling stories that really gives the everyday person confidence and um, new awareness that their story matters. So can you tell me in your perspective why is it important for us to sort of take stock of our lives and tap into our own impactful personal story? Oh, I love that question. Thank you for that. I think it's so important because I don't believe that we survived a pandemic and we got through this thing for us. Like, I think it is connected to helping and healing others. I think yeah. our lives should be about the service of others, right? Yeah. And so when we think of, especially as Black and Brown people, all that we have been through and all that we have come through, we have to tell the story to not only remind ourselves, but remind the future generation, like how we got over. And if we did it before, we'll do it again, you yeah. know? And yeah. so for me, storytelling is about how can we free not only ourselves, but others, because this day, it's a gift. It is. And I wonder, as you're talking, I'm thinking about movies, I'm thinking about podcasts, Audible, thinking about all the ways that we connect to stories. Storytelling, mm -hmm. it's not a new thing, right? It's been around for ages. Why do you think people respond so well to storytelling, to people's stories? I mean, first, it is a scientific fact that you are going to have an emotional response to the connection with another human that's based around their human experience versus facts and figures. So, yeah. for instance, if you're watching, let's say, a TED Talk, and they start out with a statistic of, X a number of people are experiencing seasonal depression right now because the season is changing right. versus then starting the story of it was becoming late fall and I was feeling anxious in my own home. You're immediately like, oh, 
I've been there too versus, I mean, it's literally just how our, our brains are, are programmed to process information. So I think that one, as we start to think about like, why unlock your story is because it's the quickest pathway to connect with another person, you know, Mm. because yes, the facts and figures do one part, but it's the connection piece and that to Mm. me is storytelling and telling the authentic story yes and so you have taken the art of storytelling and you're helping people tell their stories and and sort of using it for uh you know to their advantage to get their message out to get their platforms out can you tell me a little bit about because if people follow you know your journey this kind of transition into storytelling it's not surprising at, at, at all but I am curious around like the work that you do and why you do it. Hmm. You're so wonderful. I'm so <laughs> serious. I was just, <laughs> I was just having a conversation with my dad literally last week about this. And he said, he calls me Rob boy. He was like, Rob boy, you've been telling stories since you came out the womb. You know, mm-hmm. he was like, this truly is what you do like this is why you were put on this earth and when i was seven i told my parents i want to be a broadway performer it is every it's the only thing i knew it's the only thing i wanted i desired so i moved here to new york city had a career you know on broadway for 10 years and it was wonderful but then something was missing right like i knew that there was a greater calling and that calling was service because i don't think like i shared earlier that you're blessed with the blessing for yourself but it's how can i give it to others so I opened this company, the Broadway Collective, and for six years, I worked with young people who wanted to be on Broadway and to impart those lessons to them. But again, you know, we were saying a little earlier too, every single jump you take is going to ask you to take another jump. It's going to ask you to take another and another. And I was asked by the universe, yo, will you jump, you know? And for me, I started to feel I was having all of these incredible black and brown female, you know, identifying entrepreneurs coming up to me saying, how do you do what you do on stage? Like, what is that thing, you know? And it's interesting, like when you have a gift, you don't really realize that it is a gift, you know, like telling stories and being as authentic as I possibly can. Like it's what Rob Boy's been doing since he was a little kid, but people really need help Mm -hmm. on that, you know? Mm -hmm. And so what I decided to do was take all of the lessons that I learned as a Broadway performer and a director choreographer and an entrepreneur building this seven figure company and figure out what is the framework around identifying your signature story and not just identifying it but rehearsing it and then sharing it you know Mm, and i think when we do that and it's not based in facts and figures but it's based on our lived experience that's not connected to self but connected to the service of others yeah that's when change happens and the clients have been able to work with since starting this new company the wins that these folks are getting is just like it's so special um and i think you know why they're having this success is that similar to when i posted that you know picture of buying my home i didn't post it around the idea of let's go viral and get Oprah and HGTV to give us a TV show tomorrow. It was around like, I just wanted to show my friends and my family that even in the face of such darkness during the pandemic, like light was still happening, joy was still happening, prosperity was still happening. Like, will we have the hope and belief to keep going, you know? And it then turns into everything that we're getting to experience now. I just talked a mile a minute, friend. But But it's so true because I told you my story about like when that video came out, you're right. Like because you decided to tell your story in all of its glory and, and in the middle of, you know, everyone was going through it. But like in my living room, that song is on repeat. The video's on. My son's inspired. We're inspired. So it worked. 
you telling your story I made the connection like a million miles away through this video with Jay and Pharrell. It's just like, what? But that's how powerful storytelling can be. And so I want to end on kind of like some tangible things that you help your clients actually do to kind of peel away the layers, right? Of being vulnerable, figuring out what their story is, and then actually like telling it outside of their mama and their friends and like telling it to strangers, the world. What are you telling them to do? I first ask them to think of the people that they want to help, right? Like if you have a story to tell, it's not about you, but what is the person that's reading this? What do you want them to do? So I always reverse engineer a story around action. So for instance, if you are to tell a story about leaving your job as a news anchor, it is to inspire other news anchors to see, hey, I can take the leap as well. Leave that corporate position, yes. jump and leap on yourself, go after those creative things, you know? Mm -hmm. And so once we figure out what we want others to do from hearing this story, mm -hmm. I then ask my clients to get as specific as possible around who is that person, right? Because mm -hmm. how I shape a story, if I'm telling it to my best friend, Rachel Rogers, or my sister, Kiera, two different stories, right? <laughs> but they, need, they, they both need two different things, right? Yeah. And so I try to see their eyes and see their needs and see them and think on our relationship as I then begin to write the story. Mm -hmm. So once you identify what you want that person to do, then you identify who they are, then you can start immediately speaking to their needs. And it's pretty simple. Um, I usually use a five part framework, but for today, I would love to impart a three part framework let's of the, it. yes, let's hear it. So the first part is what happened? Like simply tell me what happened. The second part is I want to know what did you learn? Mm. And then the third part of the story is, what do you want me now to do, mm. you know? And so if I'm thinking of your story, what happened? I was sitting, you know, in a career that I thought that I, that was it. Like I had made it. I'm a news anchor. I'm, I'm hitting success. I'm hitting my numbers. Like, you know, I'm getting promotions. I'm getting all of those things. However, I knew that there was another calling on my life. I mean, like, right? do you know my story? Like, what is this? Are you in my journals? Stop like, it, stop it. <laughs> you know, um, so I end up reaching out and putting my resume out there and I get this new position. I took that leap and I jumped into full-time entrepreneurship, right? What did I learn? It's okay to jump. Yes. <laughs> what did I learn? Like, it's okay to build a new dream. What did I learn? Like, oh my gosh, I'm making my family proud. I'm making my ancestors proud. Like your husband and your son are sitting there like cheering you on. What do I want you to do? Trust and believe that there are more people for you than though than there are against you, you know? And if you are sitting in a job right now that you don't believe serves who you're called to be, sis friend it's time to take the leap you know and in that three-part framework of what happened what you learned what you want that person to do you can't tell me you're not gonna free somebody wow you know wow oh my like i this is like emotional for me i don't know it's it's the power of storytelling and how gifted you are and helping us find our stories and listen, you are so special. Like I'm going to stop because we're just going to, I'm just going to tell you how amazing you are, but I'm so glad that you have stepped into your higher calling. I'm so glad that you took the leap of faith and that you are sharing in abundance and generosity, all of your wisdom, because you are just a bright light, Robert. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>